Hello and welcome to yet another video and in this video it is something different because I would like to show you this little setup right here. Of course it's not the ultimate setup in the world but it's what I think it's a budget setup for YouTube video or a little bit of budget photography that I can really gather and make. So this is the Canon EOS M3 with the external microphone, a light, a kit lens and all of this was just under 150 euros. So without further ado, let's get into the video. So when I first thought about making this setup video, I was thinking of like, okay, the camera should at least shoot in 1080p video and there should be a lens together with a camera, it should have decent autofocusing system, should have a microphone port, should have like somewhat of a hot shoe or something like that, that I can mount things on, should have an articulated screen that you could at least see yourself. This would be really important for something like YouTube filmmaking like this because I cannot see myself with this camera, believe it or not, it's the X-T3. And I'm traveling in Thailand right now and I can't be bothered to bring a monitor with me. So in that kind of scenario, if you're like traveling, then at least you have a screen to look at yourself. Of course, the X-T3 will have better autofocusing system and you know, it shoots 4K and everything, but I'm looking at a whole setup that's under 150 euros, you know? And depending on which part of the world, you will find a lot more than just this setup or a lot less. So it's also depending on where you live, but also really depending on how patient you are with waiting for that, you know, deal or trying to bid on certain deal for a low price and also the time of the year because sometimes the end, towards the end of the year it will be cheaper as people are getting rid of their old cameras and also buying into a new camera so there is like a whole supply of secondhand cameras on discount because people are really trying to get rid of the cameras so yeah there's that and maybe in the first quarter of the year you know prices of secondhand cameras might um, increase simply because you know, the supply is slowly getting less, but it's also to the time when people usually stop buying cameras because, you know, it's not really holiday season in that point of view. So it's really depending on which time of the year, how patient you are and where you live as well. So, but I was able to find this, the camera itself, I did a video about this. It's the Canon EOS M3. It's not the best or the most recent camera in the world, but it has 1080p video recording. It is able to have a mic plugged in. It is able to like focus decently, definitely better than the M10, much better. And obviously being a photography first camera, it means that the actual form and shape of this camera is small in a photography style. So it's not too offensive when you're filming outside, people won't look at you, you will not really attract that much attention, especially if you don't use the mic and the light or just put the mic on top of the actual hot shoe itself and predict your own frame or what have you really, if you try to really make the camera smaller. The pos another positive thing is it's an APS-C size sensor, so it is a decently big size sensor and you can get different effects done like having a better shallow depth of field versus like just filming yourself with a smartphone or filming yourself with a smaller micro four thirds camera. And this has a really nice Canon color science to it. This camera also really like has somewhat decent slow motion to it at 720p at 50 and 60 frames per second, depending on if you live in the PAL land or in the NTSC land. So yeah, there is that. And of course, if you want to explore more lenses, you can always adapt with the adapter and buy cheaper lenses that's also higher quality, which are actually becoming more and more popular with this particular system nowadays as Canon is shifting towards their RF lineup. So their EFS and their EF lenses are also becoming more and more affordable. Not to mention that Sigma Tamron also makes third party lenses for Canon as well. And Sigma also makes some EFM lenses for Canon that you can really try out and get really nice different perspective with this camera should you upgrade one day to different lenses. And being an APS-C size sensor, it also means that it's also really decently nice 
in low light condition when working with this camera in low light condition. The ISO range is also pretty standard, it's from like uh, I think 100 to 12,800 and yeah. But I would only really recommend using it anywhere between 100 to maybe a thousand or thousand six hundred, not higher than that. Unless if you're taking pictures, then you can, if you're using it as around 2000 or 2500, then you can really use denoise on the editing software to denoise it a little bit and it'll be fine. So yeah, let me first talk about the operational side of things and then into the video quality and a little bit of the image quality because this is more about like a YouTube simple budget video setup and then into the conclusion why I recommend this for a lot of people. So the operational side of thing, it's a really small, nice grip camera. It's also very practical in my opinion in terms of the size where everything is laid out because it like a lot of things operated by the touch screen it also means it's just very efficient and practical and you can just tap on the menu tap on any settings at a really really fast speed so in that way it's also very efficient and very fast to operate the actual screen the build quality everything on here it doesn't feel very plasticky it's really nice and solid to operate there's nothing really you know dangling or like there's not really a sound that actually jiggles or whatever so it's a really solidly built uh camera now my particular setup when i first bought it it actually came with the electronic viewfinder but i didn't really bother to put on here because most people when they buy this camera it doesn't really come with an electronic viewfinder this camera was around 100 euros plus shipping cost and is 110 euros with the actual um viewfinder for me but most people when they pay that price they wouldn't get a um the viewfinder with them so that's why i really take it out and personally if you're doing youtube videos like this i think that the viewfinder kind of gets in the way and also not really necessary to have there so this microphone was around 20 euros this light was around 10 euros and this particular extension um thing I really don't know the name for it. Some people just call it the culture extension. Some people just call it like some sort of a grip extension or whatever. But I just typed in culture extension and found the cheapest one, which is from Ulanzi. Also, the light is also from Ulanzi, and they both were like 10 euros plus shipping. Now, I have seen these options going for like 10, 15, and 20 euros. So, search like on different websites ebay amazon what have you some of t some of them will be even cheaper than 10 euros for this uh, setup and after buying this mic it's a movo mic it's very similar to the rode video micro mic which is actually recording my audio right now um but this will be louder than the video micro which is nice because this camera does not have a really good preamp so having a louder mic means that the preamp doesn't have to work as much essentially and you can get a cleaner audio, so it's, it's really nice. But also keep in mind that the bass will be a little more emphasized as well with this particular mic, whereas the video micro will have more of a general mic sound to it. So if you like a little bit heavier bass, but also a louder um, recording capacity of a mic, then this is a much cheaper mic than the video micro but the mic will work just as well and for the light it's very simple you just hit the power button and then it just goes into the simple default color temperature that I was programmed with and you can change it to green to yellow to red to orange yellow green again blue and yeah just continue changing until you reach this and then press the power button long again and then it will just shut off and the battery lasts for quite a few hours and then you also have your USB charging there. It's the USB type C, which is good. And then you have, I can have a cold shoe here. So in case you will only bring this light on top here, you still will be able to mount other accessories on top of the light itself in case you just leave this at home, which can also be more convenient if you're traveling. So yeah, there's that. And also with the um, screws here for the, uh, tripod mount there is another screw hole in there that you can actually screw your tripod into it if you are using a tripod it actually the same with both screws so it's actually pretty good and handy 
And also if you're vlogging with the Canon EOS M3, uh, you can always tap any settings onto the screen with your finger. So that's really, really nice and convenient. So you don't need to, you know, get up or turn the camera around and just program everything. So there's one good thing about having touch screen and also this type of articulating screen. But the downside of operating the camera this way is because the screen is up and not tilted downwards, um, when the screen is tilted up, you will be able to see yourself afterwards if you're looking up the screen or not. Because if you keep on looking up at the screen, people will notice and you too will notice because your eyeball is just gonna be up at the screen and that's just really unnatural. If the screen were to face downwards and if you don't have any tripods, obviously people will not notice because um, statistically uh, speaking, and also they've done research on this, that if the screen is face down, um, and if you just look down at yourself, it will give you an, like it will give the audience an illusion that you're actually looking into the lens itself when you, in fact you're actually looking to the sensor. And that's why some of the EOS M cameras actually have the camera um, screen flipped downwards. So yeah, there's that. But otherwise, everything is really nicely organized. There's a wheel right here to control, and there's another wheel right here to control. Um, they're both to control the shutter speed, the aperture, and other settings in the menu as well. And it's really, really nice and handy. And you can just also, apart from using it as a wheel here, you can just use it as a D-pad, which is nice. And all the buttons that you need are pretty much at your fingertips. And this camera can also transfer files wirelessly to the phone, which is another nice operation side of things. So if you're vlogging on the go or vlogging on the road or somewhere, then you still can transfer the files over to your phone and add it from your maybe iMovie in the phone or other video editing software in the phone if you're just doing a simple vlog or simple travel video, things like that. So it's really, really handy to use this, um, especially for, you know, short travel video making camera if you're into that. So let's talk about the actual video quality on this camera. The video quality is actually quite okay, quite decent for the price especially. So, you know, this is out during the time when Canon was still really popular with their little entry-level DSLRs as well. And this uses the same sensor as like the 650D, the 600D, the 750D I think as well, it's the 700D. So yeah, it still has a really, really decent video output quality, but you can actually download other third-party picture profile into the camera where you can set a flatter image profile if you want, if you're really into that kind of thing, and you can really grade the color, the footage really, really nicely with this particular camera. And in that respect, if you do make the extra effort to you know, download external profiles or external um, hack profiles as well into the camera, then the camera will definitely give you better image quality than the default factory setting that usually other people will just use. And it really opens up a lot of opportunities to really grade your images really nicely, to sharpen them more naturally and also give it some sort of a mood to it rather than the standard picture profile that you usually just get with the camera. And from that perspective, this is a really, really good camera and also a really nice value for the kind of camera you're getting. And knowing that if you can just put a little bit of effort into grading your images, you can actually use the money that you save from, you know, not spending onto a new camera onto just better lenses in general and just get really nice look and then just grade the images really, really nicely and you have a really nice full HD camera right here and that's really, really nice. The rolling shutter on this camera is pretty standard. It's not Sony bad, but it's also nothing to really write home about, but it's still quite decently controlled for this camera, especially for this price point as well. The aliasing and the moiré is there, unfortunately, but it's not as bad either. And if you pull down the internal sharpening of the images and also the contrast of the images in the picture profile, if you set it down, then you will be able to eliminate a lot of the artificial effects and also the moiré aliasing, things like that. So in that way, you can just decrease those settings and also bring it back in post, that it will still look natural and also you will end up with a better image quality and look to it as well. So this is a video test outside just to see how the camera does. I do have a face mask on so it's not going to be able to detect my face but once I take it off, yeah, it's recognizing my face right now. 
the IS is also enabled, the image stabilization that is, and you just saw some example of me filming handheld with the camera while this lens zoomed in and at its wide angle with the IS turned on. And I personally think that for a standard kit lens at this price, it's actually pretty good, the image stabilization. So yeah. There's that. So this is a test vlog with the camera, the Canon EOS M3, together with the kit lens, the 18 to 55 millimeter kit lens, and it's also using the Movo mic. I'm aware that you can probably get the 15 to 45 millimeter kit lens as well, and I think if you can find a good offer on that, please do get it because it will be a bit wider and it will also deliver a little bit sharper result as well. So if you're into vlogging or making this kind of video, that lens will definitely be better and it's gonna be smaller. Of course, it's not battle, it's gonna be really plasticky, but it's gonna be more portable, lighter, and sharper as well. So yeah, there's a lot, actually more advantages with that lens than this lens, but I couldn't really find one when I was doing this kind of research on putting together this video, but, yeah, this is just a test video for you to see how the quality is roughly like without doing any treatments to it and this is the auto focusing system you're getting from the camera. Hopefully it's actually keeping me perfectly in focus. Um, I do see myself up there on the monitor though and I can tap anywhere I want to adjust the settings should I may want to. And of course you can film this in full auto or manual if you want. I have this in semi-automatic so that you can also see how it adjusts to the lighting here because the window is now facing me and now it's yeah, slowly adjusting itself. So yeah, my house is a little bit messy right now because I'm packing back like to go back to the Netherlands. So <laughs> yeah, there's that. Uh, one thing to keep in mind again when using this monitor is if I'm looking up you will see definitely that I am looking up So always try to keep yourself while looking into the lens versus looking up because it'll be really awkward when you edit And also when your audience sees the video when you're looking up Just make sure you to only use that monitor to really just understand the framing or just get the framing you want and then just look into the lens and uh, Yeah so now onto the photography image quality side of this camera. I have made a video about this camera, like my thoughts on it, a while back. So in this particular video, this section will be a little bit more brief and just simplified. So in general, it is still a really nice sensor in here for general photography and you still will be able to do a lot with the raw files out of this camera and the color science is still really nice, Canon color science and Canon color profile as well. The skin tone, the color reproduction of the sensor coming out of this camera is really, really nice still. And with the raw files, you will be able to push and edit a little bit better than say the M10 or the M100. So it is still a really, really nice camera to take pictures with. And also to a certain extent, it's also a really fun camera to take pictures with as well because of the size, the form factor, how easy to use it is, and not really bombarded with a lot of nonsense features. So in that respect, it's really, really nice. So if you want a really nice budget camera under 150 euros that delivers really nice video and also really nice image quality, but obviously not being too unrealistic about the expectations, then this camera is also really, really a good option to really consider. I'm aware that if you're not really patient and you just go with the like buy it now option, you will usually find it between 250 to 300 euros on average. But if you have enough patience, I've seen a lot going for like, you know, 100 euros, 150 euros. So within that price range, sometimes I even see for like around 90 euros even. And yeah, I would still recommend getting this camera, maybe not this particular setup if you can find better and cheaper one that works for you but this is just some sort of like a general setup I actually can come up with and talking about like the setup I like after purchasing this microphone I actually saw another option for like another brand that looks exactly the same as this microphone I think it's from like Boya or either Boya or Ceramica or something like that and the mic was around either 15 or 20 euros and it had the exact same design and came with the exact same accessories so maybe it was produced in the same factories just rebranded differently so 
you could save another 10 euros or 15 euros going for that brand if you search hard enough and the overall cost would be a little bit lower and you can spend that money on you know other accessories that you might need so yeah it really depends on how hard you search and what kind of accessories you need for this particular setup to work for you but this is just you know my general setup that i can recommend and to the last positive point about this conclusion and also this camera is that well being a cheap camera if you lose it or if it goes wrong breaks down or gets stolen or what have you it's not that much to really you know replace it of course you might lose your data if it gets stolen or if it gets lost somewhere but you know for around 100 or 150 euros if you lose the camera it's just it's not as bad as if you were to lose let's say a an X-T3, X-T4, 5D Mark IV, things like that. You know, if you lose those cameras, then you know, you're pretty much devastated, unless if you have insurance on those cameras, um, which most people don't really have insurance on their cameras. I do, but not all of my cameras are insured because I'm lazy, but yeah. But anyway, I hope this video helped you somewhat. Obviously, depending on your need, you might see other options as better options, but for general use, um, this is the option that I went for and I hope that this video actually helps you somewhat Otherwise, you can always leave suggestions in the comment section below and I'll look into it definitely I always read most of my comments anyway And also if you need a free photography guidebook, it's linked down in the description below. It's absolutely for free It's on my website. You don't need to give me your email address or anything. It's just click and download that simple and uh, otherwise, I wish you a great time, have fun shooting, stay safe, bye.